Red Apple Farm in the central Massachusetts town of Phillipston presses cider in the early morning hours about once a week so that the crew can be done making juice before the store opens at 9 a.m. Red Apple typically makes a Mac-based blend with about eight other varieties. We sell both pasteurized and unpasteurized cider. Uh, what we make here is unpasteurized cider, and I'm very proud of that. We're very uh, careful and select uh, a nice mix of apples. It's a Mac base, but at least eight rice apples. And as Don will explain to you, we're very particular which apples actually make it. They have to be uh, perfectly sound apples. Red Apple makes about 7,000 gallons each of pasteurized and unpasteurized cider a year. Unpasteurized cider can only be sold on the farm. 25 miles east of Red Apple Farm along Route 2, brothers Steve and Dave Rouse own and operate New England Apple Products in Lemonster, Massachusetts. Red Apple Farm is just one of their many New England orchard clients. New England Apple Products can press up to 1,500 gallons of cider an hour. Yet, except for advances in technology, the methods for making cider are the same. Instead of using cheesecloth and wooden racks to press apples, we use nylon bags and high-density plastic plates and hydraulic pistons. But essentially, we're doing exactly the same thing. We are, we are taking fresh apples, we're grinding them up, uh, we're putting them, in a, putting them in a cider press and we're squeezing the heck out of them to get as much juice out of them as we can. New England Apple Products purchases all the cider apples from dozens of orchards. A good cider, Rouse says, begins with good apples, and like Red Apple Farm, New England Apple Products uses a blend of varieties for maximum complex flavor. We're somewhat cyclical in terms of which apples are being harvested in the fall. Macintosh are harvested relatively early. Fuji's are harvested late, as an example. Red Delicious tend to be harvested late. So the blend of apples that we use does change somewhat over the course of a, of a season. We use a lot of Macintosh apples here because it's such a dominant variety of apples here in the Northeast. And I think if you were to take cider samples from different cider mills around the country, I think what you'd find is there are very different flavor profiles. Uh, our ciders tend to be uh, a little more acidic. They're, they're plenty sweet, but they're not overly sweet. And I think the sweetness and the, and the tartness balance out and, and the sort of the profile of cider taste that uh, New Englanders and arguably New Yorkers have come to expect over the years. The differences in production at Red Apple Farm and New England Apple products are mostly a matter of scale. It begins in both places with apples being sorted and washed. The cider making crew at Red Apple Farm inspects the apples for imperfections, removing any that have broken skin or a major bruise. After being sorted, the apples pass through a high pressure washer go up a conveyor and into a grinder to be crushed into pulp. The thick mash is then pumped to a series of eight or nine wooden racks lined with heavy canvas cloth. The weight of the filled racks is enough to make the juice begin to drip. The dripping racks then replace the empty ones beneath the hydraulic press and the juice flows. At Red Apple Farm, bottling cider is a very hands-on job. The filled cases of bottled cider are then put into the cooler. The entire process takes just minutes from beginning to end. It is ready for the consumer. The process is similar at New England Apple Products' commercial operation, only with bigger equipment and newer technology. A forklift carries bins filled with 800 pounds of apples to begin the process. The apples are sorted both by hand and machine.
Then the apples are rinsed and washed. before sending up the conveyor to the grinder and mashed into pulp. Rice hulls, a colorless, odorless byproduct of rice production, are then added to extract more juice from the pulp when pressed. The hulls are later discarded with a leftover pulp, now called pomace, which is then sold to area farmers to feed livestock. Racks lined with heavy nylon bags are filled with the pulp mechanically, pressed into juice that flows into large stainless steel tanks. One of the keys to, to preserving the freshest taste of, of fresh apple cider is to, is to keep the processing down to a minimum. When we pasteurize, we, we go up to 160 plus degrees for a few seconds and then cool right back down to about 40 degrees. We want to keep the amount of time that the cider is heated up to a minimum. We want to cool it down as quickly as possible and make sure that it goes into the jug cold and is kept cold throughout the supply chain. The filled jugs are rinsed with water to remove any traces of cider before reaching their final destination the packing room. Cardboard boxes are made on one side of the assembly line just in time to be filled with the full bottles on the other side. From apples to bottles to cartons, the process ends as it began with a forklift, now carrying away fresh-pressed New England cider. That's good cider. 